Welcome back to Yoga with Jeffrey. I'm Jeffrey Allman, yoga teacher, meditation guide, mindfulness coach. I'm gonna take you through a full practice today. And if you really enjoy it, maybe take one of my public streaming classes with live music um, or with one of my playlists. But for now, let's get right to it. We're gonna start standing. Just start moving. Unusual way maybe to start your yoga class, but just start getting your body moving. That's it. Your shoulders, your hips, your knees, yes, that's it. Now, get just on your toes and start to jump. So you're really springing. Your heels are not coming to the ground. Yes. Bring your hands up like you're dancing. You're going crazy. You'll notice I'm a bigger guy and that's okay. If you're bigger, Yoga's for you. We're just getting the blood going. Beautiful. Whew. Perfect. Now we're going to come into a warrior two, but we're going to get there slow because we're starting standing. We're going to work up and just start to move in our bodies. Move in your body. So for warrior two, your back foot is turned in at about a 10 to 15 degree angle. Your front foot is straight forward, your knee aligned to your second and third toe so that when your knee is all the way forward, you still see your big toe. Your abdominals are engaged and to really make this challenging to enter the burn, you bring your thigh closer to parallel with the floor and then bring your hands up. Your dristy, which is where you're looking, is out over your front hand. This is warrior two. The longer you hang out here, the more it's gonna burn. But we're gonna make it dynamic. Inhale, your arms up and straighten your front knee. And then exhale, your arms down and bend the knee. Your knee is never gonna go past your heel or your ankle, staying behind. And if it gets difficult, you can put less of a bend in the knee. Totally up to you, you can adjust it. Your back knee, is fairly straight, neither of which, neither knee ever locking. A little micro bend in the knee to protect your joints, your quads, your glutes, your hams, your abdominals. Behind this belly, I have abdominals and they're engaged. Inhale up, exhale down. Again, really starting to bring your breath into the equation. When you're inhaling, you're pushing your diaphragm down and out, expanding your lungs, expanding your heart, really filling up. And when you're exhaling, you're pushing your diaphragm up and in, your belly button towards your spine and exhaling fully. Inhale on the open or the up. Exhale on the close or the down. Next time you get to warrior two, stay. Bring your hand to your thigh. And we're going to turn this into a dancing warrior. Oh, yes. Really feel the opening. Really breathe into the sensation in your body. Don't worry about the exact expression being the same as I am. Worry about the intention of the expression and the focus on your breath. Never losing your breath for your posture. Always making the breath first. We'll go ahead and ease out of this. Beautiful. Inhale your arms up. Turn your back foot in to become your back foot and your front foot out to become, or your back foot to become your front foot. So we're just switching directions. Take your time to really find proper alignment. The front, the new front knee, it's my left foot bent. The knee not past the ankle or your heel. Your back, glutes, Hams, quads engaged, your abdominals engaged, your back flat, your dristy over what has become your front hand, your left hand. And then inhale up. And we're going to start to loosen up, bring heat to this side. Inhaling on the up, exhaling on the down. Yes. All bodies, all identities, all humanity can do yoga. It's glorious in the body. I'm talking, you breathe. Occasionally with me talking, I may 
fall out of sync with my breath. That doesn't mean you should. As a rule, as you're opening your body, you breathe in. As you're closing your body, you breathe out. If you're ever forgetting or I'm not guiding you, now you know. Let's meet up in a dancing warrior on this side. Your heart is open. Your smile is real. Yes, and you'll feel some burn. That's okay. Oh, luxuriate in that burn. Take deeper, longer breaths. Yeah. Slowly come up and then out. Back to warrior two. Both hands up. And now let's take both feet to a horse or goddess or yogi. Squat of sorts. Your knees tracking straight out in line with your feet. Again, the closer your thighs come to parallel to the floor, the more burn you're going to get here. Your back is straight. Your heart is open. And now we're going to breathe and move. Inhale up. Exhale. Down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Yes, that's it. Inhale up. Exhale down. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Let's turn that right foot forward again, that left foot back. Let's come up one more time to warrior two, take a big inhale, and then exhale both hands down, and your front foot comes back. And we're gonna go through our first chaturanga dandasana of sorts, but really our whole goal is just to get to the mat here. So you can bring your toes to the ground and really slowly, as slow as possible. And you can either do this with your knees up like mine are, or your knees on the ground, slowly descending to the mat. We're gonna to come to Sphinx. Your fingers spread wide, your palms flat on the floor, your elbows ahead of your shoulders, your heart shining and open, your chest is really open and shining through and your head is rolling. Really undoing that tech neck. Feeling gravity times three on your body, all of your weight on your belly, detoxing those inner organs. If you feel a little tight spot with your head, really breathe and explore it. You can break out of that solid circle just to really explore that sensation and really start to bring blood flow and oxygen to that little tight moment, to that stiffness. Switch directions. Don't forget to breathe. Each inhale longer than the previous exhale and each exhale longer than the previous inhale. Stack your hands, bring your forehead to your knuckle, and really like let your third eye or your forehead really press into your knuckle so it's this beautiful release, this beautiful pressure point. With your eyes closed, you can envision that light, that moment of energy where your knuckle is hitting your forehead. Let that be the junction of energy, the scatter, the wander, the anxiety, leaving the body, the still, the focus, the calm entering. Bring your knees up and just start to move your legs left to right, starting to open your front body, your hip flexors, your abdominals, your low back, your sacroiliac, your hips. It's not how far you go with this. This is the intention, not the expression. So don't expect your feet to come all the way to the floor. Just breathe and appreciate the mobility you're creating in your body. Maybe you start to find your ujjayi breath in through the nose and out through the mouth, creating an aspirate sound where the nose meets the throat. The sound of the sea, the sound of the leaves and the trees. Bring your hands to the bottom of your rib cage and come up to a low cobra, the tops of your feet on the floor. Your drishti, where you're looking, is just ahead on the floor, maybe six to eight inches ahead. You don't really want to crick or bend your neck. You just want a nice neutral neck, just like this. 
your heart lifting. You're using your back. It's your back that is doing the work here. Beautiful. You want more, you can lift your feet. You can lift your hands. Really intensify that detoxifying quality and really intensify the work the back is doing here. Find a nice, smooth, beautiful breath. Bring your feet and your hands down and you can come up either on your knees or just straight up through a plank. Flip your toes under and take your hips to where the wall meets the ceiling behind you for downward facing dog. I like a dynamic down dog versus static. So dynamic is moving as my right heel comes up and my right knee goes towards the floor, my left heel comes down and my left hip opens. My dristy is under my left armpit. And then I switch. And then I switch. Nice, beautiful breath. I'm talking, you're breathing. And it's not important that your heels come all the way to the floor. They may never come to the floor. They may. We're all different. If you're staying static, your dristy is between your feet or even up at your navel. You're looking for straight lines from your ankles to your hips, from your wrists to your hips. Your armpits drawing towards the mat, your hips drawing towards where the wall meets the ceiling behind you. Your head free. Shake your head yes, shake your head no. No engagement in the neck. Bring your dristy up between your hands and then slowly tip toe your feet to your hand. Keep your knees bent a lot and come into a forward fold. Hang out in that forward fold. Your knees, your feet, depending on how your body is built, could be wider or could be closer together. Looking for the outsides of your feet to be parallel with each other and parallel to the sides of the mat. With each exhale going deeper, feeling the crown of your head drawing towards the floor and your neck disengaged. Maybe your fingers graze the floor and you trace the cosmos on the floor. Maybe they come nowhere near the floor. Maybe opposite elbows. Maybe the back of your head. If it's the back of your head, you're not pushing on your neck. They're just there. They may not even touch the back of the head, but they're in this position to get a different expression and sensation in your body. Maybe you're just static with your hands touching your legs. That's fine too. With each exhale going deeper into this forward fold, Let's all meet in a halfway lift. Your hands come to your shins, your feet, or the floor, and your back comes flat. Your heart opens, your shoulders on your back, your heart shining, your smile real. Big, deep, glorious breaths as you rejuvenate, reset, and renew the body. On your next exhale, forward fold, and then inhale all the way up to standing. You'll see me occasionally step off the mat to demonstrate standing. Where I step off from is where you stay. So if I'm at the top of the mat and you see me step back here, you can stay at the top of the mat. If I'm at the back and you see me step here, you can stay at the back of the mat. I'm simply doing this so you see the full expression of my body in the camera. Inhale your arms up and exhale cactus arms. With cactus arms, your heart is open. Your shoulders are on your back. There's a little bit of a back bend. Your belly might be protruding out and that's okay. Your elbows coming down and you're feeling this glorious opening, keeping your fingers engaged, keeping the outsides of your feet parallel, all four corners of each foot on the floor, lifting all 10 toes and then letting all 10 toes come down one at a time, spread as wide as possible. Inhale up, exhale, cactus arm or goal post. Yes, inhale up, beautiful. Exhale, cactus arm. There you are. Just hold this for an extra breath. Oh, beautiful.
beautiful. Inhale, arms up, and then exhale, forward fold. And we're gonna go through a Chaturanga Dandasana. You can tiptoe, take a couple big steps, or even hop your feet back and hang out here in a plank. Engage your abdominals. Oh, and just feel the burn, feel the heat starting to grow. This time we're gonna come down and go through to a high cobra. You could bring your knees to the floor if you want, or just come down super slow all the way, your whole body. The tops of your feet flip, your hands below your shoulders, close to the bottom of your rib cage, and just come up. Your legs still on the floor, your shoulders still on your back, your heart open, this wonderful, beautiful release in your abdominals. Oh, yes. So good. Flip your toes and let your hips draw using your abdominals to where the wall meets the ceiling behind you, downward facing dog. Just like that. Gorgeous. Maybe you're still doing a dynamic down dog. Breathing, opening those armpits, bring those hips towards where the wall meets the ceiling behind you. Shaking your head yes, shaking your head no. Beautiful. Inhale your right leg up. Exhale your right leg through warrior two. We've been here before. Beautiful. Let's turn this into a little bit of a flow. Inhale up, exhale down, inhale, dancing warrior, exhale warrior two, inhale up, front foot becomes back, back foot becomes front, exhale down, inhale up, exhale down, dancing warrior, oh yes, back to warrior two, inhale up. Front foot becomes back, back foot becomes front, side angle. Your forearm can drop right on your thigh. Let's be, for me, it's my right leg forward, my right forearm, and my left arm above. Could also be your arm on the inside or outside of your leg, could also be your arm parallel to your top arm. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down. If this is too advanced, just sit and hold this. Or try this. Or hold this. Inhale up, straighten your front leg. Back foot becomes front. Front foot becomes back. There you go. Find the warrior two. Turn it into your side angle. There you go. You could hold right here. You could experiment inside or outside of your foot. You could bring your bottom arm to be parallel to the top and do a few reps with your breath. Inhaling up and open. Exhaling down, yes. Inhaling up, exhaling down, gorgeous. Inhaling up. Exhaling down, love it. And now while we're over here, let's do a Chaturanga Dandasana on this side. Bringing your front foot back behind you. If you wanna add more to this, you can leave one foot in the air, come down, flip and come up to an upward facing dog or a high, co high cobra, an up dog. Your hips are off the floor. Your heart is open. Your shoulders are on your back. Flip those toes and bring your hips to where the wall meets the ceiling behind you. And breathe. Perfect opportunity to breathe. Yes. Gorgeous. After three to five breaths, inhale your left leg up. Oh, yes. Exhale it through. Warrior two on this side, looking for that balance. 
And if you've got a block, which I strongly suggest, grab that block. Ooh. We're gonna hang out here in Warrior Two. Find a little mobility. Make sure you've got everything set up right and good. Feels good, yeah? And then straighten that front knee. We're going to triangle pose. That's why I have this block, because I really like a block for triangle. I'm coming into the triangle, not dumping, really getting there mindfully. Now there's a few different ways. You could see that my hand is on the block. My hand could also be on my shin. My hand could also grab my big toe. My hand could be inside. My hand could be outside. Wherever you decide to have your hand, make your whole body as if it's flat up against the wall. And look at the lines in your body, the straight line from your ankle to your hip in the front and the back. Both knees micro bent. You can barely tell, but you're not locking your knees. And the straight body from your crown all the way to your pelvis. And then your drishti could be up to the arm on top. You could even put a little back bend in if you want and open the heart. You could drop the top arm parallel to the floor. You could bring the bottom arm up parallel to the top and bring the block with you. And inhale. Is that good? You could add a couple reps if you wanted. Yes, it's so good. Maybe fill up the lungs at the top. Exhale down. Inhale up. The back foot becomes the front. The front foot becomes the back. Taking our warrior two where we were, straightening the front leg, finding a little mobility in the pelvis, and finding your way to a triangle posture. I like the block, but remember, shin, big toe, inside, outside, could drop the top arm parallel, could bring the block up. Glorious. And you could just hang out here. This is tough. You could add a little movement. Inhale up. Exhale down. Beautiful. I'm starting to break a sweat. Hopefully you are too. I'm talking. You are breathing. Remember, your breath should be king of everything. All right. Let's lose that block. And let's take another chaturanga to this side. That front foot goes behind you. You could leave it in the air. You could add an extra push up if you want. And this time you can go right down and through to an upward facing dog. Oh, gorgeous. So good. Flip those toes and the hips go to where the wall meets the ceiling behind you. Downward facing dog. Ah, oh, yes. At any point, and I'm sweating, so I'm gonna stop. I wanna encourage you to stop. If this is getting exhausting, a great place to come is to child's pose. Your knees wide, your hips towards your heels, your fingers spread wide, your palms flat on the ground, just like they would be in downward facing dog. Your forehead, your third eye grounding and your breath being long and continuous. Beautiful. You can hang out there as long as you want. Come back to all fours. Let's watch this out with a cow cat. Heart open for cow, hands flat, belly button dropping to the floor. Belly button going to connect with your spine as you exhale and go to cat. So cat, a beautiful arch in your thoracic spine, letting your head release to the floor, your shoulders release, and then cow, just the opposite. The belly button is gravity bringing towards the floor, the abdominals opening, the lungs filling large, your heart shining, yes, it feels so good. And then cat, the gravity is pulling on the crown of your head, and it's as if there's hooks right in those trigger spots on either side of your spine, inside of your shoulders, just dragging you up. Dragging up, and it's so wonderful. Such a great release for the shoulders and the neck. All right, let's all meet up here. Flip our toes under. 
come to downward facing dog. Think about the down dog. Are your fingers spread wide? Are your palms flat on the floor? Is your head disengaged? Are your abdominals engaged? Are your heels drawing towards the floor? Do you look more like a triangle than an arch? Beautiful. Glorious. Take a few breaths. Inhale your right leg up and we're going to come through to a warrior one. So your right foot comes forward, your left heel drops down at an angle. Your whole body raises, your arms come up. Your heart is open. You could even take your hands to your back and really open those armpits and that heart and really drop down in that front leg, bringing your thigh as close to parallel to the floor as possible. You could even put a mudra in your hand, maybe a lotus mudra, whatever feels good. Maybe it's a heart. Yes, I love that. <laughs> Gorgeous. And then we're going to exhale through and just build a little heat and a little muscle here. Come out of that warrior one and go through another chaturanga. Beautiful. Back to down dog. You don't need to take as many breaths here. You can if you want. But after you've found your form, you found your spot, inhale that left leg up and warrior one on the other side. Beautiful. So gorgeous. Don't forget to breathe. Don't let the postures get in the way of your breath. This is really gorgeous because it's opening the front side of my body. It's opening my heart. It's opening my hip flexors. It is beautiful. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Beautiful. Meet up in warrior, excuse me, meet up in down dog. Mm, I love it. Your drishti is up to the front of the mat. You can hop, skip, or jump to the front. And when you get there, be in a malasana. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So my feet are wide, my toes are out. My feet are flat on the floor. Your feet should be flat on the floor. Your elbows inside your thighs. Perhaps your hands at prayer. <laughs> Or if you want to go even wider, maybe a block. Really opening your groin. And just finding your breath. Finding some stillness, but this is a challenging posture. It's really good for you. And just be. Bring your right hand to the ground, left hand up. Left hand to the ground, right hand up. You're breathing in as you're opening and exhaling as you're transitioning. In, open, exhale on the down. In, open, just like that. Beautiful. Or just hang out if this feels better. So if your feet don't come the floor, you could be up on your toes a little bit. That's fine too. What feels good for you? Do you want to experiment with crow? Bring your hands flat to the floor just like you would in a downward facing dog. And you're just fulcruming forward. Just that simple. See how I'm just using my, now you could do this two different ways. You could put your knees on the back of your triceps or on the outside of your triceps. Every body is shaped differently. So it's totally up to you. One way, and I'll just show you this, if maybe you're new to crow, is you could grab a block, stand on the block with both feet, and bend your knees and come down to this malasana, to this squat. Bring your hands flat to the floor, and you see now my feet are already off the ground. I'm way closer to flying. You see that? And you could just practice one foot at a time or eventually, if it makes sense, both feet. Gorgeous. Now, we're gonna do a jump back, 
but before we do that, let me move the block because you don't want to land on the block. So maybe if you're still using the block, you're not doing the jump back. But once you've mastered that crow, you can work on a jump back right through Chaturanga Dandasana, essentially. So here we go. We're coming back to crow, bringing our feet up one or both, and then shooting back and coming through. Up dog. Beautiful. Flip those toes. Bring those hips to downward facing dog. Gorgeous. Yes. I love it. And breathe. Beautiful. All right. Inhale the right leg up. Exhale the right leg through warrior two. Again, there's a lot of repetition in yoga, but this is where you get muscle memory. This is where it starts to click, where it starts to feel really good. So you're in your warrior two. And we're going to take this warrior two to a half moon. And maybe you do that with a block. So you could have a block handy. And how am I going to get there? I'm bringing my block towards the ground and I'm bringing my back foot, my left foot off the ground at the same time. So I'm using my front foot as the, the balance point, as the fulcrum point. It's a lot of balance. It's a lot of physics. So let's try it. Here we go. Slow and sure, just like that. And really engaging that back leg, engaging that top arm, feeling like your back is flat up against the wall. It's glorious. Yeah. Maybe you're able to take your bottom arm and bring it up, or maybe you bring it to your heart. Maybe you leave it on the floor. Maybe you grab. Ooh. Maybe you fall out of it. <laughs> Normally I'd fall right out of it, but I don't want to fall on glass bowls. So maybe you grab your back foot. If you fall out, you just come right back in. That's okay. Open your heart. Find your balance. Take your time. Breathe. Maybe you bring that front leg or front arm off the ground to your heart, back to the floor, out of the posture. Try it on the other side. Yeah. Oh, what a great workout. Sometimes, you know, people think, oh, yoga. I actually had someone say to me, oh, I only stretch in the morning because <laughs> a lot of my public classes I offer at night. And I thought, I don't think they've ever done yoga because yoga is a lot more than stretching, right? We're not just stretching. We are working all the synergistic muscles in our ankles, in our knees, in our hips, engaging our core constantly. And remember, just because you have a belly, don't let yourself or culture tell you that you're weak or you're fat or you're, out, or you're less than or you're the other. You are strong. You may have a little extra padding there, but you have muscle and you have heart. There's nothing you can't do. There's really nothing you can't do on the yoga mat. All right, let's find that warrior two. Oh, it's glorious. Remember, we're going for a half moon. So we're bringing that front block down. We're bringing our weight towards the front leg and our black back leg up. Just like that. Oh, beautiful. And you're bringing your whole back up as if you're flat up against a wall. Maybe your dristi comes up towards the ceiling. Such a challenge. Maybe you took, maybe you took your hand up. Maybe you took it to your heart. Maybe you grabbed the back leg. Maybe this time I'm not freaked out because there's not crystal bowls to fall on so I don't fall down. Your heart is open. Don't practice the wrong glass like I am. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Yes, it's so gorgeous. Maybe you lift that arm or that heart or you stay on the floor. Just open and breathe. Feel the expression in your body. Come back out. Beautiful. Oh, is that glorious. Bring your arms up. Lose the block. Maybe you got a strap, a towel, 
a rag or just your hands. We're going to take a prasarita. Your toes turn in just a few degrees. Your heart opens, your abdominals open. Yes, it's so glorious. And you bring your hands, you either grab, I'll, I'll demonstrate a couple different ways, that towel or that strap or that rag. Oh, and let your head just come towards the floor. Don't forget to breathe. Oh, it's a beautiful stretch. It's a glorious expression. <sighs> Wonderful. Maybe you don't need the rag. Maybe you can just grab your hands and you're open enough to do that. <sighs> Wherever you're at, let's come out of that. Beautiful. Oh. I'm just getting us started in yoga. We're not done yet, but we are gonna start to cool down. We are gonna start to get through this. Our next step is our right foot forward, our back foot back, and our Chaturanga Dandasana. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Oh, and then just come right to your knees. We're gonna find a little bit of a back bend here. And we're gonna do that with um, camel. And so one expression of this, you'll notice how my feet are. Right now, the tops of my feet are flat on the floor or your toe mounts and your toes are on the floor. This is actually going to be a little bit easier, but also a little more sensational because you're gonna really feel this in the arches of your feet and in your toe mounts. You're gonna push with your back and open your heart. Gorgeous. Also something very common, you'll notice I have this like bump right here. And I'm bringing attention to this because you might have this as well. I was super uncomfortable about this for years, no matter how much work I did. At one point in my life, I was down to 185 pounds, had a 32 inch waist, had visible abs. But even when I would do this, I would get this bump right here. I talked to my doctor and he said, oh, that's very common. It's like a birth defect. We can go in and we can do surgery and we can tie that up. There's, it's just a normal thing that happens. Don't worry about it. I'm like, I'm not gonna get surgery I don't need. Thank you for telling me. So ever since then, I let my belly look big and get big no matter what. Plus I have some belly fat too. So don't let your physical appearance, what you look like, keep you from expressing a posture. What should keep you from expressing a posture is pain or discomfort. Pain or discomfort, not how you look, okay? Because what is important is how you feel. All right, so I'm gonna let my belly be big and slowly come back. I'm feeling this opening, you should be too, in your hip flexors, gorgeous opening, opening in the heart, beautiful extension in the back. And I'm coming back. This may be as far as you go right here, but you might be able to reach your heels. Let your head go back. Beautiful. And breathe. Gorgeous camel. Oh, yes. Maybe you can drop further into it. You could go all the way to the floor, maybe. Maybe not on your first camel, maybe on your second or your third, or maybe 10 years from now. Ah. Slowly come out, take your toes, and get some percussion. Let them go. You can come down, but not really. You don't want to really fold over because we're still working the back. So you could just come down just to kind of rest some weight on your arms. You could go through a cow maybe, but not even a full cat. Just kind of like let the belly hang out. Maybe move your hips left to right. Get a little more percussion on your toes. That feels really good. And after you feel some balance, you can come back up to your knees. If this is uncomfortable, you could put a blanket under your knees. You could put a second um, mat under your knees. 
Maybe this time you try it with your feet flat on the ground. Maybe you got to your heels pretty easy. This will bring your heels a little further away. Here you go. Really get into it first and then bring your feet and your head. Oh, is that glorious. Oh, and really open up, really push those hip flexors forward and up. Oh, yes. And breathe. You should be able to talk easily, breathe easily. If you can't, you're too deep. Don't go this deep. Don't go this far. Slowly come out of it. Last thing to come up is your head. We're going to do that three times. So go ahead and maybe drop into a cow. Get a little percussion on the toes, a little side to side with the hips, maybe even some circles. Yeah, so maybe a little S curve in the back. Beautiful. You just don't want to go from a back bend to a forward fold. You're not trying to think of like a wire hanger. If you do this over and over again, like it would snap. You're not going to snap your back, but just don't need to put stress on it. Just don't need to put that much pressure on it, okay? So we're going to work our way back up for our third and final camel. You could do it with your feet this way or on your toes and toe mounts. Totally up to you. What felt more comfortable? What felt more accessible? Maybe you don't go all the way. Maybe this is as far as you go. Maybe you take, and this is fun, a baby camel where you come down first and you bring your hands to the floor and you go the opposite direction and you raise your hips up. This could feel glorious. Maybe you do it with a little bit of movement. Exhaling on the down, inhaling on the up. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Let's come out of that, come to our rear end and get some percussion on our calves. Feels really good. Move those feet around, circle them around. Let your feet go left to right. Bring your feet flat to the floor and we're gonna come to constructive rest. Just hang out still for a minute, really letting your back settle your shoulders settle, your hips settle. Everything is just creating contact with the floor. And it's isometric because you can't really control gravity or maybe you can, but feel as though there's three X gravity on your body really pressing you into the floor, really creating meaningful contact with the back of your head, your shoulders, your entire back. Everything is really grounded, the pads of your feet, now let your knees drop left to right. And after everything we've done, feel how much more open they are. Gorgeous. Wonderful. Not forgetting to breathe. Maybe the next time they're to the right, let them stay to the right. Maybe you want more and you bring your foot up to your thigh. Oh, is that wonderful. No pain. Just sensation. Bring your arms out to a T. Maybe you're dristy off to the left side. You're really starting to cool down now. Come back to your breath. If you lost it, hopefully you never lost it the entire time. You can unfurl that foot, come back up through neutral, let both knees come off to the left. If you put your foot up for a little more, you could take your left foot onto your right thigh. Your dristy is out over your right arm.
unfurl that. Wiggle those knees out again. Let your left foot come out straight and bring your right knee towards your heart, grabbing your right shin. Take your left hand on your right thigh and your right arm out to your right side and twist. Your drishti is out over your right arm. If this is too much, maybe you put a block or pillow under your knee or your foot. If it's not enough, maybe you grab your foot and really get a stretch. Maybe you want even more and you get a quad stretch on your other foot. The quad stretches in your quad and your leg, but you're using your foot as leverage. Wherever you're at, pick what is most comfortable that you can release the deepest in. Find calm, focus, and silence in your mind. And with each exhale, go deeper into the twist of your choosing. Getting that full, glorious spinal twist all the way from your pelvis through your lumbar, your lower spine, your thoracic, your upper spine, all the way through your cervical spine, your neck. Each exhale getting longer than the previous inhale. Noticing the color and movement on the back of your eyelids, cooling and slowing. Noticing the heartbeat in your fingers and toe tips. Noticing the collision of the air, your breath on your nostrils and your lips. Slowly unwind. Bring both knees towards the heart. Grab both shins. Let the right knee straighten out now. Oh, yes. Grab your right hand on your left thigh. Your left hand opens up to the left and find the spinal twist on this side. What variation did you take? Maybe it's different on this side because our bodies are asymmetrical. Oh, so glorious. Did you do that full everything stretch and take the quad stretch as well? God, I love this posture. <laughs> I remember the first time a yoga teacher taught me this, Noah here in Chicago. I remember he said, in a hurry, you could do this everything stretch. And that was about 15 years ago and it stuck with me. I've not seen any other teacher teach this really. <laughs> I love it. Oh is so good. I guess I teach it. You carry on the lineage of all of your teachers when you become a yoga teacher. It's really beautiful. And you have all these memories that fire in your head of when Claire taught you this, or Quinn, or Gina, or Amy, whoever it is. And you just remember, you go, yeah, I'm going to add that to my sequence. Oh, Aaron did that, and that was glorious. It's wonderful. When you're doing your self-practice, you can do the same. You can bring postures from each of your teachers and bring them into your own practice. I encourage you to do that. I'll be honored if you take any of mine with you. Let your next exhale be the longest and the deepest. Surrender completely into this glorious twist. After you feel you've found balance, you can unwind. Come back up. Roll around. Roll your legs in circles, really releasing the low back and the abdominals. So gorgeous. Maybe you could take a simple inversion just by bringing your feet up. If you have a block, I'll show you a trick that kind of makes this easier and even more restorative. I love to teach this. You can bring that block under your sacrum, which is really the base, right up kind of above your rear end at the base of your back. It's 
that big fused bottom part of your spine there. And then just bring your feet right up. I like to hold, you don't probably need to, but hold the block just to be safe because it kind of freaks you out. And you think, oh, I might be falling off of this. And just breathe, have your feet, your toes wide and open and your feet parallel flat to the ceiling as if you're standing on it. And just let everything reverse, the flow and the energy, the yang and the yin. Feel the connection of your shoulders and your head on the floor and let whatever anxiety or tension is left in your body flow out and additional focus, peace and stillness flow in. Slowly let your feet come down and out. If you were using the block like I was, you can remove that. Let your hips come down, your knees go side to side, just kind of unwind what you just did. If there's any postures as a yogi that you want to do now, now is a good time. One I suggest is a happy baby. Grabbing the outside of your feet, your feet are parallel to the ceiling as if you're standing on the ceiling and you're pulling down and really opening through the groin. You can go left to right. A variation I like is intermittently straightening one leg and bringing the other towards the center line of the body. It's just a really nice expression of happy baby. Or you could just rock nice and big side to side. The nice one I like to end with is taking your weight up towards your thoracic spine and going left to right, one vertebra at a time, giving yourself a back massage as you slowly land the spine. Slowly wind out of this until your low back, your sacrum completely lands and then let your legs come down. Let your knees be wider than your hips, your feet wider than your knees. The palms of your hands up in the air. And move all 10 toes and all 10 fingers and then let them go. Ankles and wrists, let them go. Forearms and calves melt into the floor. Knees and elbows release and relax. Biceps, triceps, quads and hamstrings loosen. Hips open and shoulders under your heart. Your heart opens, your abdominals release. With each breath, think, are my abdominals totally loose? Let them go. Let your head go side to side, left to right. Open and close your mouth. Up and down, left to right. The tongue floats without touching the top or the bottom of your mouth. Your eyes float behind closed lids. Your sinuses drain. Every follicle releases, every follicle of hair. Let everything go for some time. Let everything go for some time. I'm going to do a little sound bath. While I'm in the sound bath, if you find your mind wandering, if you get any scatter and wander, come back to the vibrations I'm creating. I'm gonna to touch on every chakra in this sound bath. And you don't have to know what it is, which chakra I am freeing, I'm aligning. It will happen naturally. Just come back when you scatter and wander, when thoughts and emotions come up, which they will, label them as thoughts and emotions, let them go and come back to the movement and color on the back of your eyelids, the life in your body, the collision of your breath with your nostrils and your lips and the vibrations that I'm making. And let everything go and just be here now.
You can start to bring movement to your fingers and toes. Maybe crack your eyes open ever so slightly, let a little bit of light in. Stretch your fingers as far from your toes as you possibly can, laying on the floor, opening your heart, taking big, beautiful breaths, a morning stretch, no matter what time of day, the day it is and then bring your knees towards your heart, grabbing your shins and giving yourself a big hug, feeling your whole new body you've created. And organically, 
roll to your left or your right side using your left or your right bicep as a pillow in fetal position. And you could lie right there, or if you wanna join me for a little closing, you can come up to seated using your abdominals and your arms. The last thing to come up is your head and you keep your eyes closed. Once you found a comfortable seat, put your hands on your thighs, your shoulders on your back, your heart open, big, beautiful inhale, your diaphragm pushes down and out. Fill your lungs all the way up and then as you're exhaling, make a shushing sound. Shh. Imagine a waterfall or an energy fall, light and positive energy washing anything that's left, anything that's left, any tension that's left, anything, feel the pressure. For me, it's like, it's like El Yunque in uh, Puerto Rico outside of San Juan. Just feel that water crashing and just putting that final smooth out on all of your muscles, easing all of your nerves, all of the scatter and wander in your brain. Let's do that again. Inhale big, push the diaphragm down and out, heart open, deep, deep, deep. Once you think you've filled your lungs completely, take another inhale, another sip, and then shush it out. Shh. Visualizing that waterfall, that energy wash. Do that two more times without my cue. bring your hands to heart center. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be safe. May you live a life of ease. Namaste. Thank you so much. Hopefully you subscribe. Hopefully you check out one of my live classes, um, livekick.com, or maybe you want to do a private class with me. I've got some great private packs, so you could buy some one, three, five, ten, twenty 10, 20 packs of classes, and we'll practice together. And I'll make a practice for you. Stay curious. Be wonderful. <laughs>